Every guy wants a big garage. They don't care about the house. Every guy wants a big garage. We're high, low, high. Well, it's not our fault the floor's not level. I'm like, well, yeah, you poured it. Yeah, that looks like hell. Well, it's not really our fault. The roof's not straight. I'm like, you built it. It's finished. It's passed. It's wrong. Just do what you said you would do. That's all I want. <laughs> Dave, nice guy. Lived across the street, had a dream. I like that spot on the corner. Nice big backyard that we see here. Walked into the backyard and thought, this is really cool if you could put a big garage behind the house because every guy wants a big garage. I would like to build a shop in the back for my photography. Sorry. That's what I call parking. The garage is built, reserved for me. It's a square box, 12 foot high ceilings. Dave says to the contractor, I thought we were going 18 feet. His advice was, we have a permit to build a structure that's 12 feet. Let's go ahead and do that. When it's finished, we'll raise it to 18. Mistake number one. How you doing, Dave? Nice to see you again. You too. Jacked it up. Uh, without having a foundation in here, so he's jacking it up on dirt, basically. Gets it up, starts building the work around, it's all wobbly, it's all shaky. Ceiling caves in, falls down. Obviously, they've made a mistake in trying to go higher up in the ceiling. Like, he could have killed somebody. Can we have bathroom? Yes. Kitchen, nice. Port separately? Yes. From that point on, all hell breaks loose. That was the first stop work order. That was the big one. That was the one that lasted the longest period of time. That's the one where you gotta go to talk to committees of people that know nothing about anything and try and convince them about what you should or shouldn't be able to do. What a strange way of doing this. I mean, I see a step up in the front entrance here, step up in the bathroom. They continue to work while the stop work order is issued. Like, they're in jeopardy of losing like a license and being charged. So they gotta, you know, they kinda gotta respect that. Things started to happen. Stop work orders one after another. What's with the sand? When the snow thaws, the water runs right in through these cracks. So we're getting down and underneath the curbing. We're gonna have to some bathroom. Uh, just this area here. Basically, see, like, break down the floor area. Okay, so we have a simple bathroom, shower, toilet, sink. Everything's workable, despite like the fact the shower never really fits. Why? A lot of stupid things with the city happened. I said, I, I want to put a, a slop sink in my garage. You know, clean out paint trays, all kinds of stuff. I want to put that in. And they're saying, well, you want to put that in your garage? You, you can't put that in your garage. I don't need a shower in my garage, but the city said, you've got to have a shower to do this. Why would I want a shower in my garage? That's interesting. Then they come back to you later and they say, well, why do you have a shower in your garage? It's like, because you told me you wouldn't give me the permit for the sink without the shower. Five years later, it's to this point here. Roof, how are we doing? Are we leaking? Yes. Uh, roof is leaking. Most obvious areas of the map. Well, you have a gradual slope this way, but I can see all these areas here, these white spots were puddles. We're going to see a leak right downstairs here. When push comes to shove, you're like, well, you know, I got all these problems. Like, yeah, the floor's not level and my walls are all out of square. And, you know, what are you going to do about that? All along, water sits there, there, there. Obviously still there. Here's where you're leaking, right? Yep. No, this is not the way we do this. This is very thin roofing. That's very, very thin. It went from a $50,000 job, 50 grand for a garage. That's a lot of money. To 80000 to imperfections, to leaks, to problems, problems, problems. You gotta kinda take care of this. This has got nothing to do with the city. This is your problem. This is your poor workmanship. And this is the guys that you brought in here to do stuff that, you know, are showing up in the middle of the day and then leaving an hour or two later. And at this rate, they're never gonna finish. This is one layer. I can tell by walking on it. I can feel it. Why add on and then slope the roof this way when the roof was designed to slope this way? And this is probably just wrapped around the edge, which it is. It's not the way to do it. But that looks like hell. That was the first sort of sign of like, hey, what's going on with my roof? All right. Well, I've seen enough of this. We have a lot of work to do. Let's go back downstairs. In the long run, Dave had no choice but to actually talk to his lawyer about suing the contractor. Kind of the worst part of the settlement is you got to bring somebody back that you're not comfortable with that you've just sued in one and then hope, hey, he's going to do a good job for me. Well, no, he's not going to do a good job for you. I want to check to see how low your flooring is compared to your foundation wall. Because if it's a lot lower at this point, we are going to have to dig all the way around this place and waterproof the foundation. I have options. I can raise the floor on the inside, which means I got to move all your cabinets, everything you'll have inside. We're definitely losing the roof completely. And that's going to have to re slope. We're probably going to have to build up and scab on top of the existing rafters and create a proper slope. I'd love to give you a new garage door, much higher, reframe everything, bring up the curb so we have a proper watertight system. I'm going to take the roof off. I'm going to open up the walls. I'm going to inspect this. I'm going to see whether or not I can raise this floor, waterproof the outside. Side, and I'm going to turn this into what should have been done in the first place. The more I do, the more I get stunned every day. That's ridiculous. 
That looks like hell. Tiny leaks turned into big leaks, which turned into more problems, more water. That's very, very thin. You gotta kind of take care of this. This has got nothing to do with cities. This is your problem. When things go bad, relationships go bad. Contractor with government, homeowner with contractor, homeowner with government. I got a call from the contractor. We got to stop work order. Everybody's got to go home because they want the fireplace taken out. And I'm like, what fireplace? There's no fireplace in my garage. Why do I have a stop work order for that? It's, I don't know, but it's against the law for me to work, and we're sending everybody home. Oh, another day, another dollar. How are you doing, Robbie? Good to see you. It's really an investigation day. I can't see how we're going to, you know, do everything at once. We've got to figure out how we're going to do it. We're going to pull the roof and see what's been done, and we'll find out from there. It appears to be sloped well coming across this way, and then obviously we see it sitting in this area, and I'm sure the more water that comes up here, the more that sits. We've got all kinds of puddles. What we might do is start ripping just on the perimeter a little bit just to see what we're going to be up against. I think we got an easy pull up here. This is the good part about guys doing things wrong. Oh, come on. Oh, look at this. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It looks like uh, just 15 pound felt paper. Torch down to tar paper. Tar paper is very flammable. You could have burnt the place down. Holy cow. All right. Obviously, this is going to be easy. Five minutes. I'm pretty damn sure of it. Good idea. We should save it as a rain tarp. Yeah, really. Look at this. Answer. You know what? The more I do, the more I get stunned every day. And I shouldn't be surprised. I just shouldn't be. This is the exact leak downstairs in the room where we saw the ceiling, right? So we see that this has been a water area that's been penetrated over and over again. And it's only, what is this, half inch? Not a square move on a flat roof. Look at the rod, look at the rod. We have no choice but to take a photo by what I believe it's half inch, very flexible. But look how it's cut, everything. It's just cut. He's an animal. Well, here's one thing that wouldn't have passed, and I'm really afraid of the structure now, just based on what I've seen. I'm not afraid it's gonna fall in. I'm afraid what I have to do to fix it. We have an R30 bad insulation right here. We do have a breathable space. No holes in this beam whatsoever, which means it stops airflow. So no wonder we have so much problems with the sheeting. Okay, so he has a double header. Oh, we're definitely, definitely not wet. Definitely not wet. This should have been tongue and groove. This is why we're gonna see it go so bad. But because it's so wavy, it's because it's not breathing. It's trapping moisture within the roof itself. It's not breathing. So it's killing all the wood on top. And I can't believe he hasn't flooded way worse than he already has. We see two by 10s, we see two by 12s with a scab on top. We see different layers. Obviously two by 10s on that side with ripped two by fours on top. They tried to create a slope. This is gonna take me a while to fix. And this is just the roof. Which scares the hell out of me. How much money? $80,000. Pissed is what I'd be. At least, at least a five degree slope. Insulation was somewhat correct. I mean, it's not that bad, but when it can't breathe, it's going to rot all the wood. Now it says three eighths plywood. We've ordered five eighths, 75 sheets, of tongue and groove. I'll leave this roll for walking for now. All it goes to one roll, leave it. Okay. I'll tell you, this is one reason I don't like bat insulation. Anytime you're gonna have a void like this of about three inches on the end, that's massive heat loss. So if you're gonna insulate, insulate everywhere. The idea was to rip all the two by eights down and create the slope, but nobody used the chalk line. An inch and three eights, an inch and seven eighths, all in one section. They just cut by high. So that's gonna make it go like this. We got a whole bunch of finger work there. A lot of minor things cause a lot of major things. At least they could have used tongue and groove. It wouldn't be so bad. What I can do is just pull all this off, you know, leaving obviously the two by 12s in place because these are fine. Fix all the insulation and then just re-slope it. A little bit of mold. Not a surprise to me. I'm going to slope this roof. Isn't that unbelievable? Torch down to tar paper. Tar paper is very flammable. You could have burnt the place down. Just do what you said you would do. That's all I want. <laughs> the trick to insulation is making sure you don't pack it too tight that it sits fluffy. The way this was done, not only is it just packed down, but we have all kinds of voids in the center and on the edges here. And it was insulated right to the outside, so we'll make sure we cut those pieces and fill these voids and fluff everything to sit properly and meet properly. All we want to do is insulate to this point. That allows the socket to breathe up and above because now, instead of going from what I'd say they went up six inches to zero on a 30 foot span, it's not enough. We're gonna go up 10 inches to an inch and a half. That's gonna give us that breathable zone right across the whole top. So we need a string, chalk line, skill saw and extension cord, please. So okay. we're gonna be from zero, four, nine and a quarter, two, five and a half, up. 
So let's chuck wing that from that point to the top corner. Okay, so rip this, and okay. then I want you to use that as a template. The crown is always on that side when you put it down as a template. Okay. Okay, and then keep marking, keep cutting, keep going. Now, if you notice, what did we do? We cut the top side and not the bottom side. Right. This way we stay nice and true with all the rafters, and the top side is what we want to sheet. Right. I like that angle, it's gonna work. Every one of them will go into place, we get it sheeted, and we have a breathable zone all the way through the top, which allows the bottom sheeting to breathe, which is what we want. We actually notice quite a bit of mold on the underside of some of the sheeting. So this way, we got that run straight down. The existing 2x12s are fairly level and true, so that works for me. Now we're gonna have a run that way. Got our plate on, we gave it a slope. It's a quite significant slope here, and what we're using is uh, ring shank nails to hold it all in. These are nails that are actually ridged so that uh, they grab into the wood. They don't pull out like you see some nails. We're using TL and nails. TL just helps the, it's an extra bonding. So what it's gonna do is grab onto the other piece, grab onto this wood, and just hold it all in. And then the nails, extra insurance. Twenty-four and five eighths. Here we make sure that we have airflow coming up, coming through underneath, right through the other side, which allows all the sheeting to breathe. Really, the idea with the safety rails is it's a warning. You, you even come close to it and touch it, you know you're too far. And when it comes down to it, do I want any of my guys falling off this roof and getting hurt? No. been a hell hole trying to adjust to total imperfections. However, the guys are good and they were able to do it. Now we can drastically see that nice four inch drop from one side to the other. Nice and true, exactly how we want to see it. Uh, we're just getting ready for the roofers. We're gonna sweep this off, get the safety rail back up again. We don't want to get heat, any heat or flame down to the, the wood deck. If we put that on this first and it covers sort of fire blocks with the seams on the protective board so we don't have any uh, chance of a fire. It's not 100% fireproof, but it does uh, keep the heat away from directly being in contact with the wood. Now this looks light, but let me tell you, 15 pounds minimum a sheet, it's not light. This is a very smart product to use. It's a fire board, so when they torch down their first membrane, nothing's gonna light that fire. What we do is we offset the seams about half a sheet, uh, similar to plywood, like a sheeting roof. That way it doesn't sort of telegraph through on the base roof. It just flattens out the surface a bit. We're just digging around the foundation and soon we're gonna be pulling off all the siding because the last thing I'm going to do is cover this up with a new siding. So that does not work for me, but we'll, we'll expose it and see if there's any rot or mold or anything. Never cover it up, not a smart move. Pull it down, investigate, go new. So as we're digging, we're seeing that they have the sealed gasket here and they're just using a plastic that runs underneath the bottom plate. I never wanna see wood within six inches of earth. We see the uh, plastic membrane that's here, and unfortunately it's only on the corner and not all the way through. This is the highest point of the place, and this should have been right across it and a waterproofing on it. So we know that the foundation is four feet deep. We don't have to dig all the way down to the footings, right? In this no, case. No, not at all. What we have to be concerned about is the uh, top two courses of block, which is above the concrete floor on the inside. And what I'm proposing that we should do is we're going to dig it up, uh, prime it. Uh, we're going to apply a blue seal onto the wall, drainage board, weeping tile, one foot of gravel. And the weeping tile is going to be continuous right around the whole structure. And we're going to run it into the valley uh, behind the uh, property. We got a little bit of a storm, I think, coming. They're calling for a 70% chance of rain. So we're going to try to get as much of the base on as we can because that will give us a watertight seal. It's basically a roof at that point. It's just not granulated. Coming, so we're hurrying, Let's trying to cover this roof as quickly as possible. Good job, Mike. Good job, buddy. Way to go. Way to go. Rain is coming, so we're hurrying. I'd be pissed if this was mine. I got another stop work order. You can't put drywall up in your garage. And I'm like, oh my God. He didn't give up. 
He pursued. He kept going. I went to my local politician. He couldn't have been more useless. He actually sent a letter to me <laughs> on his stationery saying, I have no opinion about the matter. And it's like, wait a second. Five years to build this thing is totally unacceptable. Going through hell not only with the contractor, but honestly with the government. I'm getting nowhere with these people. They're not answering my calls. They're not returning any of my letters. They want me to build showers instead of sinks. It, it was just, it was stupid. Stop work order after stop work order to the point that he's got to go see the mayor himself. He says, I have drywall in my garage. Nobody came around and told me to stop. And I'm like... And then even the mayor says, what's this all about? So he calls the guys that's getting all the stop work order. He's like, come on up here and explain this to me. So sure enough, this guy trudges upstairs and he sits down. He sees me. His face just goes chair white and he sits down and he's like, yeah. He's like, why can't Dave have drywall in his garage? He rambles on and on and on about why Dave can't have drywall. And he's like, that makes no sense whatsoever. Sign off and let him put drywall in his garage. This is ridiculous. How we doing up here, gentlemen? You're doing good. Looking good. Look at this, eh? Strong, flat, and sloped. One thing I love about these guys is not only do they do it right, they overdo it. And that's what I want to see. But look how this works. With the flashing on the outside that has the upturn and it's underneath, obviously, these two layers. What's going to happen is when it rains and the water's rushing down, and even if it does want to come this way, it holds the water here, directs it down to the bottom where the east drop is. But look how they've cut a, a precise eight inch strip that comes right across, waterproofs from this point to the flashing. And then with the top layer that comes over, they'll cut it approximately a quarter inch, half inch short. So when they heat it down, they see that bleed come out. They want to see that bleed. If they don't see the bleed, how do you know it's watertight? You don't. This whole procedure makes it perfect, and this is what we want to see. Money well spent. What we're doing here is we have to cut out 18 inches of concrete slab at the, dry, at the garage door as well as this door because we've got to dig around the foundation. So I'm going to measure right off this and mark it up with a straight edge, 18 inches. Now I'm going to do it just a dry cut to give myself a scribe line so I can visually see the line that I want to cut. I like things straight. And if you don't give yourself a nice guideline, you're going to be all over the place with this saw. So we'll do a dry cut scribe. And if you notice, I'm going to keep my wood on this side. So if I damage concrete, I'm damaging stuff I'm taking out and not the good finished stuff. Now, I didn't harm anything on this side, and I have a nice scribe to cut with. Now we'll hook up the hose and cut it. Now there's two reasons to hook up the hose to the saw. One, we'll keep the blade cool and prolong the life of the blade. Two, we're going to keep a hell of a lot of concrete dust down. raised any dust. I can jackhammer that slab out. I'm telling you, as soon as we cut it, it, it snapped down. You can see the uh, drop here. See that? It just pushed right down. How, how can I push that low? There's never good news. It's never like you come here and he's like, hey Dave, you know, we over the roof. There was a pile of money up here. Like, there's never good news when this stuff goes on. It's always just... How much is the bad news bad? First of all, I want to pull it all down and inspect it just to make sure we don't have mold, we don't have, we have proper insulation because we had to fix a lot of the insulation mm -hmm. on the uh, top there. I'm curious to see what's behind the wall here when he takes that off. Like, will there be mold back there? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't look promising. Everything's coming off on the outside to redo it, but we don't have wood touching earth. You know, this concrete foundation should have been higher than the grade. Wet concrete always travels to dry. So that's why we'll travel inwards because mm -hmm. it's dry, right? So same, same. Like if we stop it from coming in, it does get wet, it will wake up and breathe out the top and allow it to dry. If you trap it 100%, it won't. When you go a step beyond what it's supposed to be, you've got even less trouble. Because I'm sure a lot of the stuff here was done to code and it was done the way legally it could have been, but it's not maybe the way it should have been. Uh, just chalking the line, we have to mark the splashing out on the underside so that we can degranulate it. And what degranulating means, we're going to take the surface off here so that when we go to bond the flashing, it's, it's rubber to rubber, not rubber to stone. Our slope of the roof is actually going this way. Um, and the reason why we, we 45 it um, it's so that you know, the water that's coming in behind this flashing will get diverted down the slope of the roof. Um, as opposed to having the flashing that's so where you've got almost a dam for the water to sit up against. You know, any vulnerable points on, on, on roofs, whether it be slope roofing or flat roofing, are using the protrusions like the chimneys and vent stacks. And what we want to do is minimize the possibility of a leak. And this is one of the areas uh, or th uh, install methods that we use to, to help minimize that. Look at this, see? 
is strong, flat, and slow. We have so much happening today. We've taken over the whole street. We're spraying, we're spraying the foundation wall. Hold up a sec. I'm doing this for about 45 minutes. No, that's before I got. This floor is super MPA. It's super, um, we should be way ahead of this. Let's go over to the doorway here. This appears to be about eight inches thick. So what I want to do is snap this out so that we see inside, not just the foundation wall. Okay. Okay, this will be a lot easier to break off. You should hit it from this side. Don't hit this floor anymore because I don't think I'm going to take it up. Because the floor is lower than the outside level, we're going to put up a spray foundation coating. And it's just really like putting an elastic rubber band around your foundation. Once it's dry, we'll cover it up. This is seen this monolithic. It's one wrap. It's uh, waterproof uh, and vapor barrier all at once. You cannot make a mistake because once the membrane is dry, it will dry into a, an ocean blue color all the way around. In some places, you'll see that it, uh, it'll dry up uh, almost transparent. So you go back and you touch it up until you get that ocean blue color. Well, this is a good sign. At this point, I see proper insulation. I don't see any condensation or any worry of mold. So, so far, I'm feeling good. We see a proper gasket seal at the bottom. See, this looks like a lot of damage, but it's not. It's just the lumber itself. We are seeing the black, but we don't see any mold, which makes me extremely happy. Damn, I'm feeling good. This is good. This is extremely tough concrete. So what happened is water was getting in here somewhere. I was washing this out a bit. And you can see I can get my arm right underneath that, so that's going to create a, a weak point in the concrete. Let's take a hammer, go around the room, knock on the floor, see if you find any other hollow spots. Mark them. We'll deal with that, mark them, we'll deal with that as we go. Okay. And I want to bring in the laser level to see just how bad this is out. This is the high point. What do you got? Six inches bang on. Six and almost a quarter, so that's pretty level with the middle. Oh, I'm telling you, they have no idea how to level a floor. Well, when I phoned up Bean, the uh, concrete specialist, he says we need a minimum of four inches on the floor in order to go over top of this. So I'm, I'm happy with that. And what that tells me is by putting the laser level, it shows me where the highest point is on the floor, how bad the floor is out and what we have to do to uh, get a minimum of four inches. Five and five eighths. Will we have to break down the middle area to hit the bathroom door is the whole ticket here. Everything else is high except the bathroom door. So that's our worst case scenario to raise this high here. Everywhere else is okay. I'd rather do that than pull this concrete out, which would take a week of uh, bins of guys of uh, pulling it out to put in a level pad. It will go over top of it. I'm not concerned about this. It's getting that four inch minimum. Very simple. We're gonna leave that overhang, right? That's good, I like that. See that at the corner? It's not as bad, but you see a gap here and you see a gap at the end. Oh my God. For guys that don't know how to stud, we probably have a crown out, a crown in, oh, a crown yeah. out. I don't think this will be too hard coming down. Looks like those guys are having a pretty good time over there, so. Take it down. Okay, bud. Thank you. They call this a sheathing tape, which bonds two dissimilar materials, or in this case, two similar materials. And uh, now we have a weatherproof seal. And uh, we've just stopped here. We gotta do a little framing here. We just wanna get the siding guy started right now. We're using a concrete composite siding. Great product, hard to install, but in the long run, you're gonna love it. Vinyl aluminum sidings are a lot more flexible um, in terms of installation, uh, a little more user-friendly. This is definitely not a do-it-yourself type of uh, product. Definitely need uh, quite a bit of experience and training to, to install it. Because we have to lay a new concrete floor over an existing concrete floor, we have to scarify the floor. In other words, grind it down. We need something to bond to or adhere to. That's a workout. Ready to put the curb in place, the new curb, which is going to be higher than the outside grade. Okay, it's right on the one inch, perfect. And of course, it's not level. <sighs> it's a difference of five eighths. So we're higher here, lower on that side. By wearing these red glasses, I can see the line much better. Because if you look in the wall right now, you really can't see it. When I put on the glasses, I can see the line. Cool tool. existing foundation and what this is going to do is lock this curve that we've now created in from being pushed out at all 
we're going to put quite the weight load of concrete in here, and I don't want this to be pushed. Is it 20 minutes? Yep, yep, we're good to go. Nice. Good to go. the MPA we have here? It's um, ultra horizontal 25 MPA and then we got the polypropylene fibers and the Nova Mesh HPP. That goes in the concrete and it dissolves. That dissolves and it mixes through. Here's the old fiber that we were using and there's some of that in there too but basically by using these it's given us that structural equivalent to having a welded wire mesh in there which is really good for the concrete if it's in the right place. That but is this, brilliant. And basically once this thing disperses that's all through the concrete. Look how hard it is too. I, man, hard. And they're just, they're solid, they're hard. That's like a ton of rebar in there, but it's not metal. Polypropylene, and it's a hard plastic in here. Almost like a toothpick. Thank you. Stop, please. I just noticed as I got down on my knees that we had a slight hump in the floor, so I pulled out the laser level just to just make sure that we have that mark on the concrete. It's two and three sixteenths above our line. Eight and three quarters. I thought it was high there. It was a little high, so now they're raking it back. They'll uh, float it out again, and we'll double check it again. We want it perfect. We have the opportunity. Let's make it right. That looks way better. That's absolutely perfect. That's what we want to see. Let's we'll set up a bit and then we'll get the uh, pads out so we can walk across it, start hand troweling it to perfect it. But we're pretty well on the money for levelness. And you can see it, you know, it looks level. Hey, the circus. All the painters are here. The cabinets are going in. New countertop in the kitchen. New trim around the doors. Finish it like the other person said he couldn't. <laughs> Working on the outside, finishing the caulking, the siding. The east troughs, downspouts, cleaning up the property. John's created a nice little ramp on the inside. Perfect in case he wants to drive his vehicle in to load up or his motorcycle. You notice there is no wood on the jams. We've reduced it in, and that's we have all our wood behind the drywall so they can anchor the garage door to. This is actually going to look good, you know, because normally you see the wood all the time, right? Now we're attached to the drywall. It's going to look good. It's going to look sweet. Yeah. That's the main part. Let's pull it We're caulking the windows. Water can't get past the siding, between the siding and the window. It would create quite a problem if it did. So we've got a nice color match of caulking that matches the uh, same color as the siding. We're just going to seal everything up. Because the countertop is a U-shaped countertop and so big, I've asked Sean to order the countertop one quarter inch short that once we get it in there, we can maneuver it and then just cock the top of it. Okay, we're just starting to get tight. Are we clenching that tile or something? It's just really tight. It's like rubbing all the way along. Nope. No, I don't, I don't want to shove it too hard. Because these tiles are here, it's not like we can slide that whole top in. We can. So that's why I asked for a quarter inch short. Unfortunately, the countertop company made it a quarter inch bigger, so they made it exact. Okay, let's pull the top open. Six 
So we already strike this. Well, let's try it. Now go to that end, do that end, and we'll, we'll okay. fit it. Let's try and drag it more on the ceramic. That's right. So stay away from the wall in the center. More than likely, everything's going to square. There's no doubt in my mind. I just want to see if I can get it back just a bit more. The whole thing? Yeah, just, just so I don't have a huge gap here. If I, if I have any room, I'd like to try and get it in. And I'll just push on that. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ah, that's what I wanted. there now we just have the sink to put in we're going to clean up and take this back to Dave a little bit of plumbing uh nice to do a little bit of plumbing once in a while just being a plumber I totally respect this man to not give up. All right, let's go get him. He kept going. And this man deserves someone to step in and say, hey, we can fix this. This man deserved everything that we came in to do. Hey. Are you ready? I am indeed. Okay. How are you? Just a little. Yeah. No, Just a little. Okay. Sorry about that. No, no, no problem. Oh, we that effort to make it to Christmas. Oh, we fixed your stairs, right? I noticed. They're beautiful. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Well, that, a little thing to add up to something. Well, that was minor compared to this. Oh, look at this. Not bad, eh? Oh, it's great. Well, for me, what do we do? We walk in, it starts with a roof. Wow. Obviously, start with your roof, pulled your complete roof, mm -hmm. restructured the whole thing, then did down a triple layer effect. Actually, it was four with the protection board. Not just a small roof, but a huge roof. Worked our way down to investigating, obviously, structure, foundation, dug up all the foundation. All new weeping tile all the way around, all new double coat uh, water system with the blue seal and the uh, outside plant and product. The structure is an important issue. We fixed that. The roof's an important issue. We fixed that. The foundation, a major important issue. We fixed that. New curb, brought it up higher. Yeah. So everything worked out just perfect with the garage door mm -hmm. obviously new east drop downspout all the way around the siding you know what this was so much work to do this siding but i really like it yeah it looks fabulous it looks not great. only does it look good the longevity of this product is phenomenal it looks it looks fabulous i wouldn't even believe this was the same building it looks great it does look different doesn't oh. it yeah it's like you put a brand new building here we damn near did <laughs> we damn near did are you ready to go inside absolutely yes okay. yeah oh a garage door opener oh look at that so let's talk about what we've done inside here. It's great. You know what? It makes a difference when the floor is level, doesn't it? It does. The leveling of the floor on the inside, I think, was more of a pet peeve than anything to Dave. We fixed that. We did a lot of investigation to see just what we could do with this floor. We brought in specialists big yeah. time just to determine, can we do this? So once we brought it up, we created the curb for you so you can drive in and out on your bike or your van, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to load up, at least you can't get up over that. We have the sensor control on the garage door so it's safe. Oh, this is yeah. a thermal door. This mm -hmm. is not a cheap door. This is a very good door. It's winterized, so this way when it's closed, you're warm. Now that the floor is up, we had a hell of a time today working with your cabinets because we had to reconfigure them. I bought you a new countertop, sink, taps. It looks fabulous. Pretty yeah. good. I can't tell you had any troubles at all. You make it look easy. Well, <laughs> now it's easy, yeah. it's done. But the floor's brought up to the bathroom floor, so that works for me. Everything's nicely trimmed out. Yeah. We even went to the extreme of getting proper plates for all your speaker wired holes, because that would oh, drive yeah. me insane. Yeah, that's cool. Again, this, this terminal over here. Yeah. So we put up that. Uh, we had to totally raise the height of this, so cut off your cork board, bring it back yeah. up again, and get it back into place. And I see you put a cabinet over here. Well, that was kind of ugly. So yeah. for me, you know, it was, just didn't work. So it just dresses it up a bit. Not only that, you remember the hot water heater was yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So we neatly tucked it in the corner, ran all the plumbing properly. It gets a lot more space in here. Yeah. Does it's, it work? Absolutely does. Absolutely does. It, it feels great to be back inside. So the job started off right. 
supposedly hired a professional contractor, got all the permits. As a matter of fact, he educated himself so much that he talked to the government to see how big of an area he could build, how he could build it, what his interests were, talked to the neighbors. You know, he did all the proper things. Well, I know everybody usually does the big hug and kiss for you at the end, and that just wouldn't work for us. But no. I, I wanted to say thanks so much, and uh, I appreciate everything you've done, and we've taken a bit of time to uh, put something together here for you. Why a world of hell? Why? Oh, look at that. So this is just our little thank you. This oh is everything my that was involved in like, putting this together from your end. That's my crew. That's your crew. That's you and the crew. Oh, am I ever impressed. Thank you. Thanks. You're a good guy. Automatic door. Great. Perfect. Yes. All righty. Who's next? Yeah. I don't recognize him. I've seen him on TV a couple times. <laughs> Fast enough. I gotta go fast. <laughs> I know my phone ended up like this. Some people were up here, so I think it's about to be like, I'm doing good, I can hear it. Right. 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 